Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. <clears throat> All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that you do not believe. In this state, you should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that you do get, whether it be a gift of tongues or a gift of prophecy or any supernatural experience that you may have, it can and it will be used against you in the day of judgment. With that said, no peace. What? With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that, that are watching in, to the saints that couldn't make it, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing they can do is repent. repent. And then what else? That they may live. That they might live. Amen? amen. Got to that amen and then I'll start throwing that amen and then Amen? Let the crowd say amen. You go, what the, the Christians feel a little more comfortable. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You gotta make sure, you gotta let them know. God said, come as you are. You a Christian, you bring your butt in as a Christian. I light your darn butt up. <laughs> no, I'm just messing with y'all. Um, oh, I just saw one. Sorry, Ma, I was supposed to text you. I totally forgot. I apologize for that. Um, let's open up. Daniel, what you talking about? Daniel, where you wanna open up? You know what I'm saying? Where you want to open up? A knot? What you got? You know what I'm saying? Let me get your birthday verse. You know what I mean? You ain't a real Christian unless you got a birthday verse. Tonyo, what you got? You want to got something over there in mind? What you working with? TJ. TJ? It's up to you. What book we opening up at, TJ? We got to start off somewhere. Let's throw a book out there. Name what you got? You know what I mean? Just give me a book name. Come on, what you got? We on the clock. Somebody give him a book. Any book. Get to, somebody give TJ a book. Somebody online, y'all online, y'all can type it and give us a book too. TJ, you know what I'm saying? TJ still trying to think of one. What y'all got? Nobody gonna give him a book? We gotta get somewhere to start, goodness gracious. What'd you say, Joshua? That's where we starting. Joshua, you want to start? Joshua, we just got out of job. Give me something else. Chronicles. Chronicles, okay. Chronicles what? Give me a number. 1028. Chronicles 10, 28? Is that a one? I don't know. See if 10 go to 28. That's my birthday. 10, 28? <laughs> Chronicles go to 10? It definitely goes to 10. Do it, do it go to 20, chapter 10, go to 28. I don't know. I can't even think of what chapter 10 is. 2 Chronicles 33 or 36 or something. You can't just see. They said, well, we got to go with first because she just said Chronicles. So we got to go to first Chronicles. Got to go 10. She called it. 28. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to cheat her. You know what I'm saying? That's her birthday birth. You know what I mean? Nah. Why should I say it be something cracking too? Right. <laughs> no, it ain't cracking? Oh, it don't go? We're going to 14. I didn't feel like it went. All right. You know what I'm saying? So we go, we go what, you, what you got? It only go to 14. But 10 is good though. Ten. We doing gonna do ten. I'm just saying what verse. TJ, you can't look. You just gotta come off the top of that. You said what? Oh. Mm. You wanna go to Daniel? All right, let's do it. Let's go. This is Daniel. Daniel chapter. What is what am I looking for? Three, I think. That's three. Yeah. It's Daniel chapter three. Give me, if this Daniel chapter 3, give me a verse, uh, I don't know, you might have to help me out with that one. Uh, it's Daniel chapter 3, maybe verse, oh, what happened? I don't know what happened here. Video messed up. 
You found it? Yeah. All right, so this is Daniel chapter 3, what verse? 12. All right, it's Daniel chapter 3, verse 12. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded you. They serve not your gods, nor worship the golden image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought the, the, the other two had Hebrew names too, but they completely changed their names. But whatever. And Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not you serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if ye be ready, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut? Psaltery and dulcimer and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Uh huh. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Right. So he gave him an ultimatum. He said, "Look, when you hear the music, right, and you gotta understand this whole thing was a setup, right? The whole thing was set up just because they looking at the people like." Mm, I don't know if these people are going to obey the law. These people serve the most high God. Right? So I don't know if they're going to obey the law. You know what you should do? You should create a new law. Right? These people don't like worshiping other than the most high God. So you should create a new law. If they hear this music, they got to worship the image. Right? So they set that thing up and made it a law. Just to put a Hebrew, yeah, put a Hebrew in a position where you got to go against your law or you got to go against our law. You got to go against your God, really. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Go against our God. Right? You got to go against your God or you got to go against our law. You know what I'm saying? Which one you going to choose? Right? When the book of Revelation told, tell us that the people going to worship the image, what do you think it's talking about? All this stuff, so the whole book is lined up and it's kind of giving us a precursor of things that's going to end up happening. It kind of give, give us an image. You know what I'm saying? Kind of help us visualize, kind of see what we're going to be dealing with. Right? So they put these laws in place just to set the people up, right? From God's point of view, what is that called? Just to set the people up? It's called a test. That's a test, right? Most of God going to let that thing happen just to see, you know what I'm saying? Let me see if you're going to serve the people or not. What do you think is happening in Judges? A test. La okay, so last week we read in Judges that we took over certain parts of the land and then we took certain people out, but some people we did what? We left them in the land. Right? We left them in the land. So the Most High God said those people will end up being a test for us. We're going to read it today. Right? So let's see. This is, uh, this is, uh, this is Daniel chapter 3, what? Verse. Hush, boy. Verse 15. It's Daniel chapter 3, verse 15. But if ye will, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast that same hour into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall save you out of my hands? Right? So we ask the question is like, if you get cast in that fire, what God gonna save you? You know what I'm saying? All this Yahuwah stuff you talking about, what Yahuwah gonna save your butt out of my hands? Right? So now he's provoking us. Now he's putting us in a position like, oh, okay, now we gotta serve the most high God. Right, we can't punk out like that. You know us, our people, we ain't about to sit here and punk out like that. Like, okay, I get this. Not not our people that serve God. Nah, okay, for sure. I'm gonna go ahead and take the go. I'm gonna go ahead and take the death for 500. Thank you. Right? Let's see what happened next. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego uh -huh. answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Uh huh. If it be so, our God who we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace. Right. And he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. Uh huh. But if not, be it known unto you, O king, that we will not serve your gods nor worship the golden image which you have set up. They told him, Shale, listen, the God we serve, he can save us. But even if he don't, we even if he don't, we down to go in. What you talking about? We ain't gonna worship no image if that's what you were thinking. Let's see what happened next. 
Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury, mm -hmm. and the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Oh yeah, he didn't play that stuff now. Therefore, he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace seven times over. Seven times? One seven times more, that it was wont to be heat. Okay. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Mm -hmm. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, mm -hmm. and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Uh -huh. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace ex exceedingly hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh -huh. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego fell down about into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Mm -hmm. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake uh -huh. and said unto his counselors, did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? He asked his counselors, he said, how many people did we cast down into that fire? Wasn't it three? He asked him, like, listen, didn't we just cast down three people into that fire? What happened next? They answered and said unto the king, true, O king. He's like, yeah, yeah, we, yeah, it was he only three of them. and said, lo, I see four men loose walking in the middle of the fire. How many do you see? Four. He said, I see four of them walking in the midst of the fire. And what was one of them like? And they said, and they have no hurt. Uh-huh. The form of the fourth is like the son of God. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mountain. He said, the son of the fourth, I mean, the one of the fourth, that boy is like the son of the God. He said, how many are we doing there? Oh, just three. Well, I don't know. I'm looking down there. It look like I see four of them. And if you look at that fourth one, that boy look like he one of the sons of the gods. That boy look like a darn angel. These people ain't ready for this stuff. Right? These people not ready for it. All we have to do is put, listen, they could have any, they could have cut side deals. You know that type of people we are now. These people that took away our hair, that took away our pride and our God, right? They got to believe in we darn Egyptians and believe in we darn uh, Zulu nations and all these other weird stuff. They took away everything from us. So now, it ain't nothing for us to cut a deal. Somebody somebody proposition us, listen, you bow down. we be like, listen, I'll bow down. You know what I'm saying? You know what we're going to say to each other in the back end? I ain't really serving that God. I don't really care nothing about that God. I'm just going to bow down and make them think I'm serving that God. And we think we doing something. I'm just going to make them think I'm serving their God. I ain't really serving their God. I'm just going to bow down. Really, I ain't even praying. I'm still praying to Jesus when I bow down. Yeah, okay. Right? That's our mindset now. We cut deals. Right? We cut deals. You look at us back then, the ones of us that serve God, ain't no deal cutting. What you talking about? I take the death. Like, what do you mean? Light the fire up. Make it eight times in. Seven ain't hot enough. I serve a God that will deliver me. But even if he don't, that was our mindset. Right? That was our mindset. That's what we look at. The word got to touch us for that. Right? It take word. It take word touching us. It take word touching us and cleaning us up. Removing all of the filth out of us. Once that filth is removed, you can stand on God. Grab real quick. We ain't even supposed to talk about all this. Grab uh, grab first John. Who chose that? Was you, TJ? Mm. Give me uh, give me First John. What I want? First John chapter three, verse twenty-one. Verse twenty. Give me First John chapter three, verse twenty. You know what I'm saying? You can stand up like that. There's only one reason you can stand up like that. Tell me, give me the death. The boy, that choose death over that. It's 1 John chapter 3. Give me verse 20. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. What that mean? If our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. You know what a Christian to do? A Christian, when you feel when you feeling guilty, I mean you ever, I mean you ever been a Christian and you were just like, man, I really shouldn't have went out last night. Got drunk, slept with all them girls, slept with all them dudes, did with all that. I really shouldn't have did that. Right? I mean, I just feel guilty, man. Right? I just feel like, you know what, I really, I really shouldn't have, I just really shouldn't have wowed out. I really shouldn't have cussed my teacher out. I really shouldn't have did that. I know I wasn't supposed to do that. I really feel bad. I like my teacher. Right? I really shouldn't have did that. And you just start feeling guilty and you know your butt is a good, I mean, you a good darn Christian too. You know your butt is a Christian. You go to church next weekend and you just sitting there like, am I saying? 
saved. And you know what that is? Your heart is condemning you, right? That's really what's happening. Your heart is condemning you. So you tell your pastor, you be like, man, listen, I really messed up. And sometimes I'm just struggling to know whether I'm saved or not, whether God loves me or not. A dumb Christian to mess around and send you this verse. Be like, mm, comfort yourself in this. If your heart condemn you, God is greater than your heart. In their mind, they think that means even though your heart condemn you, that don't matter because God will beat your heart up. No, 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 Christian. That's not what it means. Read it one more time. Beloved, if our heart condemn us, wait. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. He knoweth what? All things. That's not telling you that God will beat your heart up. It's not telling you that God will fight off all of the condemnation that comes from your heart. What that's telling you is, if your heart know a little bit of your sin, oh, God knows all of that sin. If you condemn yourself, if you feel guilty in yourself for something you did wrong, don't you think that you got something past God? God know that and the stuff you ain't even thinking about. He trying to let you know, if your heart condemn you, you ain't even in the dark running yet. You ain't even started yet. You know all the stuff that God got in mind? You don't believe me? Okay, watch the next verse. He said, if your heart condemns you. He's basically saying, if you know you did wrong, God definitely know you did wrong. That thing's a no-brainer. <laughs> Go ahead, keep going. For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and uh -huh. knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemns us not, then we have confidence toward God. You see how he set the two against each other? He said, if our heart condemns us, you know what I'm saying? God is greater than our heart. <laughs> he know everything. Don't fool yourself now. But then he said, beloved, though, if our heart don't condemn us, we have what? Confidence toward God. Give me the death. We got confidence towards him. I know what my God will do. He'll deliver me. But even if he don't, give me the death. That's how he set us up. Right? That's the mindset that he gave us. That's what we have to tap into. Only way to tap into that, you can't tap into that walking around feeling guilty all the time. There's no way to tap into it. It's not going to happen, right? You feeling like, oh, well, maybe I did this wrong. Maybe I... The only two re It could be a maybe you did this wrong, right? Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. If it's a maybe, though, what does that mean, team? Maybe? Yeah. Like, if I feel like maybe I did something wrong. You don't got confidence. I ain't got confidence, but what does that mean? You might have did something wrong. What else does it mean? God knows. Definitely God knows. But if it's a maybe, you know what I'm saying? Like, wrong is like, wrong or not wrong? You got wiggle room. So if it's a maybe in my mind, I don't know something. I don't know the word. Yeah, no confidence. I don't know what the sin, I don't know. Like, is this a sin or not a sin? I don't know. I'm like, maybe it's a sin. Right? We can saw that. Right? We can saw that. Learn it. Right? Get in the word. Learn it. You know what I'm saying? Hear the word. Learn it. Right? We can saw that. Now you have confidence. Oh, no, I know I didn't do nothing wrong. Or, oh, I know exactly what I did wrong. It's one or two, but you have confidence. You're able to say for sure I did wrong or I didn't do wrong because I have knowledge of the book. Once you're able to walk in that confidence and be like, I didn't do nothing wrong because I know it's a sin and I know it's not a sin. Right? Then you're good. Then you're in a point of peace. Right? Now when they come to you talking about, you know what I'm saying, certain image, you can look at them and be like, listen, you can do, y'all can do whatever y'all want to do in that music, come on. That ain't none of my dark business. Let me tell you what I'm going to do. Right? Let me tell you how I'm going to blow that thing out. Right? When the time come and that song play, you go ahead and crank up that fire. You know what I'm saying? You go ahead and get the, get the fire crank. Turn that thing up seven, eight, nine, ten times eleven. I don't care how many times you make it hot. Make that thing as high as you can get it. Because I'm going in that thing. And just don't be surprised if it's a fourth one walking up in me and that man look like the son of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar look like, you know, man, the man look like the son of the gods. Right? That's what we have to do. We have to be able to tap into that. It only comes from learning the book. That's why we're here. It's Judges. Give me Judges chapter 3. Give me verse 1. Let's go ahead and pick up where we left off. It's Judges chapter 3. Give me verse 1. We read this stuff, but you got to be ready to die for righteousness. You know what I'm saying? You got to be ready to die for righteousness. You can't be, you can't be ready to die just, you know what I'm saying, 
we've been ready to die from some stuff. You know what I'm saying? We've been ready, you know what I'm saying? We on the streets just ready to die. You know what I'm saying? Some of us deal with that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Just ready to die. Whether whether it's a, a suicide thought or it's a it's a I'm just gonna walk into, you know what I'm saying, some danger recklessly. It's the same thing. It's the same spirit. It's coming from the same energy. Ain't no different. You just don't have no hope or value. What you think it is? We running around the street, sitting here, standing in the middle of parties, and they shooting, and we refuse to duck. What other? What else is that other than that? I want to die. That's a bad mind. That's a bad heart. That's a lack of hope. That's saying I don't see my life going nowhere. I was back there. I didn't see past no no twenty something. I wasn't thinking past. I didn't care. I wasn't looking about. I was 18, 19 years old. I wasn't thinking about what I was 20. What does that mean? I ain't got time for that. Because I didn't care. I, it wasn't no hope. It wasn't nothing to look forward to. All it was is, man, I'm about to go out tonight. And if somebody pop off, then somebody pop off. If we lose it tonight, we lose it tonight. Whatever. That was the attitude. That's a lack of hope. You don't have nothing to look forward to. You don't see no way out. You just look at it like, it's my life and this is what it is. We got to regain hope. We got to be able to see past all this. We got to be able to, at the end of this road, I know what I'm after. And once we have that and that's ingrained in our heart and we walk in that with confidence, all the rest of that stuff, that's where the value is. That's why these young men, they can look at it. Now, when they ready to die, they ready to die for God rather than just ready to die for lack of hope. It's the opposite at that point. You're still ready to die, right? I'm still willing. If you're going to do it, then do it. Go ahead and knock me out. Go ahead and do it. It's one thing when I'm telling somebody, let's go. You know what I'm saying? What you gonna do? You gonna shoot? Right? We all here, we all fighting, you pull out a gun. What you gonna do? You gonna shoot? Shoot then. That's a difference, right? That's cool in the streets, that's admirable, whatever. Your butt dead, then what is it? For the most high guy, you can have that same attitude, but there's hope at the end of it. You get raised at the end of that thing. That's what we're here for. It's Judges chapter 3. Give me verse 1. Now these are the nations which the Lord left to prove Israel by them. To do what? Prove Israel. What that mean? Prove Israel. Test. That's a test. He said, I'm going to lead these nations because I'm trying to test y'all. Let me make sure y'all going to do what I said do. Zahar. Bring me, uh, bring me a cup of water, please. Right? Let me make sure y'all going to do what I told you to do. I, told, I gave y'all strict instructions. I said, don't make no deals with these people. Don't make no side deals, right? Don't cut no deals. When they say do it, I mean, when I say do it, just do it. Facebook tripping, I think keep on logging me out. I wonder what's going on. You know what I'm saying? But uh, he said, when I say do it, just do it. Let's see what happens. We talked about last week, the going got a little tough. You know what I'm saying? They wasn't able, we weren't able to take out everybody. You know what I'm saying? Some people gave us some problems. So after we had them problems, guess what we started doing? Cutting deals. All right, listen, you stay on that side of the street, we stay on this side of the street, you know what I'm saying, and maybe we can trade. Why do you think I'm saying that? Right? Because he's supposed to be listening, that's why. Keep going. Sit up. Only that the generations of the children of Israel might know to teach them war, mm -hmm. that the least such as before knew nothing thereof. He had to teach them what? War. What do you think it teach us? What do you think? All right, so let, what, what do you think? What do you think the three Hebrews got Here. when they was when they walked into that fire and they walked out alive? What do you think that taught them? Okay. I appreciate you, son. Yeah. I appreciate that. What do you think it taught them? Obedience. Imagine the confidence you got. The Most High God showed up and saved you. Mm. Taught you, man. Ain't nobody messing with my God. Are y'all out of? Are y'all sick? Are y'all out of y'all darn mind? Okay. And then what happens after that? We ain't got to read it, but if we went back, what happened after that? Nebuchadnezzar's like, everybody respect their religion. These the ones. You know what I'm saying? Or we mess with them. And then the people who tried to encourage Nebuchadnezzar to set up them laws, get y'all butts in the fire. Y'all won't make me do something stupid. Y'all sit y'all butt. Later on, Nebuchadnezzar served the most high God. So whoever don't obey their gods, I'm killing he served a God. He served our God. Do y'all understand the weight of this? Like, it's all from confidence. 
What do you think these people doing? Think about it. When these people come, we may post on Facebook. We might talk to people on the street. You know what I'm saying? We might we might just live a certain way and talk about, you know what I'm saying? I don't celebrate Halloween. Anything. What they come doing? Le needling us. Saying stuff to us. Trying to, trying to get a reaction out of us. What do you think that is? You think they're doing it because they really bothered? They don't like what we're talking about? No, nah, that's how the simple look at it. They testing us. They trying to see, is it really what that what you're talking about? Is it really in you like that? Right? Are you really going to stand true? I mean, because if you are, maybe that's something I can believe in. They looking for somebody that will stand on what they believe. And not every time, you know what I'm saying, something happens, they just break down and start making side deals. Right? We got to stand on it. We heard the word. We know it. It's right there in front of us. When it happened, that's it. Ain't no budget. I ain't going to sit here and argue with nobody. I ain't, ain't got time for that. I used to do that stuff. I ain't got time for that stuff no more. But I'm saying, argue, dude, John, argue with me today. Talking about some, uh, you know what I'm saying, polygamy this and polygamy that. You know what I'm saying? I got to a point. I ain't going to tell nobody they're going to hell for polygamy now. You know what I'm saying? Because I just can't find it in the book. I can't find it exactly in the book. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going to. I ain't got to a point. The brother made a good point. I ain't going to say it exactly. But I will tell you, but very clearly, though. The book is very clear on what the right thing is, though. That thing say the two shall become one. I can do a little bit of math. Right. You know what I'm saying? When that thing say the two equals one, that got that. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what else. I don't, know, I don't even know what else we talking about. Let's say even something else might not be judged by the most high God. He made clear what the right thing else is to do. Right? Now, y'all can do what y'all want with that. Right? I told him. I was like, listen, bro. I was like, these people can do what they want. I say me and you go what the book say. You ain't never seen the you ain't never seen the commandment telling you go get seven wives. No yeah. brother come back on there. He is like some other brother. He come back on there. He said he said, well you must not know the law. Don't you know that uh, Yah entered into a covenant with all of Israel? So I was like, you not saying what I think you saying? <laughs> He's like, yeah, well all of Israel. So I was like, listen, bro, I ain't in the business of arguing with grown men who know how to read. And got their mind made up about what they want to believe in the Bible. So if you are looking at this like Yah has married millions and millions of different people, then that's your business, bro. You go be just like your God and you go get as many wives as you can get. And don't your butt stop either. You just keep getting it, right? But now when you want to have an honest and fair conversation about righteousness, you know what I'm saying? When you want to sit down over some book, you know what I'm saying, and talk about what the book say, Come holla at your boy. Tune in to a pot. I mean, to a uh, to a uh, Bible study. Call me. Hit me in my inbox. Do whatever you want to do, and let's talk this thing through. Nah, but what I'm not about to do. He would have a point if God made the same covenant with a bunch of different nations. I'm gonna tell you why he ain't got no point at all. <laughs> but that's not what God did. Every time he talk about Israel and concerning the covenant, do we say Israels? No. Do we say Israelites? It's one. He said, I made my covenant with Israel. Jacob. Do we say, do we say he? Or do we say them? He said he. I made, he said, I made my covenant with Israel and him and he. That's one, he looking at the whole nation as one. That's what I said. You know what I'm saying? If you don't fit in the nation, get your butt out of here. Matter of fact, a bunch of other nations when Israel was split into two and it became Israel and Judah. What was the very next thing that happened? He kicked Israel out. He divorced one of them. I married one. Y'all became two. You get your butt out of here. Judah, my wife now. Do you know what he did after that? You ain't the whole woman I married. You get your butt out of here too. And then he said, you know what? I'm gonna make a new covenant. And part of that new covenant is gonna be what? Reconciliation. Judah and Israel got to become one. <laughs> Why y'all sitting here talking about? Don't talk about no book That's with the me. Only thing you ain't trying, if you ain't trying to learn no book, then like, why are we talking? That's the only way it's going to work. I ain't about to sit here. All right, y'all know what the book says. He didn't go out and get it. You want to have multiple wives? Don't, don't, make me, don't make me tell you you can't have multiple wives. <laughs> That's your darn business. If you want to put up with the madness, you do it. You go get as many. I mean, you go be just like whatever God you worship. Get them off. That brother, another brother came on there. 
No, nah, if I get multiple wives, they're going to be all virgins. This, that, another. Huh? Good luck. You know what I'm saying? You do what you got to do. I'm just going to tell y'all what the books say. People, people, good and darn Muslims out here. He ain't get, he ain't get no other wife either. It's the same one, just like scripture say. You reconcile to your wife or just be alone. Sure, yeah. Sometimes, you know what I'm saying, these people just got to learn the truth. That's all it's about. It's about just learning the truth. Who going to teach it? That's what we here for. You know what I'm saying? Antonio, you know what I'm saying? Daniel, that's what we here for. We got to understand the book so we can spread this book out. Right? We can teach the women, the men, and the darn children. Right? That thing fall on our shoulders. I saw one of them today was like a woman should never seek uh, to learn scripture from a married man. Like a single woman should learn scripture from a married man. Oh, that's crazy. These people have lost their darn minds. <laughs> but you know, I get it though. You know what I'm saying? It's been abuse. So much of this stuff been abused. It's kind of like it's kind of like how you know what I'm saying. We were talking about the other week. You know what I'm saying? You remember at the at the at the that, that thousand man march, how that woman got. I don't know if you were there at that point, but a woman got up there. She was like, "Stop telling y'all boys not to cry." You know what I'm saying? So it, you know what I'm saying? When you think about it, you know what I'm saying? It's like you know what I'm saying. Let your boys cry. Let your boy, boys cry. And it's like that what what she's attempting to do. And it's not her. You know what I'm saying? It's just. This is kind of like the theme now. So it's like what people are attempting to do is deal with the 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 way that men don't know how now how to deal with emotion. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? We tend to hold all this emotion in and then explode and don't know how to deal with it because we don't know how to uh, release emotion. So I understand what they're doing. So now what they try to do is overcorrect another. Okay, make your boy cry, baby. Let him cry. Is that the solution though? No, because this butt get up crying all the time. What woman going to look at him as a leader? That same woman that let your boy cry, if her man was crying like that, she, she done. You can't put no trust in no man that's doing that. So we got to find a happy medium and everything. So just like this situation, what was the situation again? Uh, a woman should, a single woman should learn from that married man. So what's happening there? You have preachers sleeping with the same people that they preaching the word to. Right? So they are here. And so what do you want to do now to correct that? You gotta be like, you know what? It should never happen. Yeah, like scripture said, a woman should be taught by a woman. And that's not true. Right? Y'all sure? Talk to me, Mark. <laughs> right? So we look at it, that's not that's that's not true, right? It's important that we look at it for the word. We understand what's going on, but we have to find the real solution. Right? We have to be able to say, oh, you know what? Let's make the tough call. Right? This stuff is difficult. It's hard to do. But let's make the tough call. Let's get right in there. Let's not teach our boys to cry or not to cry. Let's teach our boys what it means when they cry. That's what I tell my boy all the time, boy. You know what I'm saying? You better hold that thing in. You better hold that thing in and figure it out. Because when you do cry, make sure it's worth it. Whole world got to move. If a man cried, a whole world got to move. It can't be no, you can't, you can't just be wasting cries out here and be like, okay, that's just normal. That's just what he do. It means nothing when a man cry? Oh, that's crazy. A man cry, everybody in the room is supposed to just be like, oh, what, what should we do next? Because it got to be, this is the one, this is so bad, I cry. That's supposed to motivate us. That's supposed to give strength to everybody in the room. The man is weak. Everybody in the room got to have strength. But if you so you if everybody's so used to you being weak, we always gotta have strength around you. And if I always gotta have strength, if I always gotta compensate for you, you're worthless. They can listen, these people can run their mouth all they want. I know what the truth is. I know how the world gonna view us. Ain't looking no crybaby man. That's crazy. You don't wash your darn mind. Ain't looking no darn crybaby man. They ain't gonna be accepted. Only tell these boy, cry all you want though. Not my boy. You better hold that thing. If you gotta cry, go ahead and cry. You just make sure that thing worth it. Right? That's Tasha. She know. My boy cry in public. What I do? Shovel it butt to a bathroom. Come on, let's go. Hurry up real quick. Tuck that thing away. Go ahead and wipe your eyes. I'll sit there with him too. That's my boy. I sit there and go ahead and let it out. I understand. I get it. You don't like what I said. You don't like what your mom said. You don't like what the kid did to you. I get it. Let it out. Wipe your eyes. Let's get back out there. We ain't got no time to be crying in public and doing all this stuff and wasting these people. People let us know. These people don't care nothing about our tears. For what? Hold on to them things. Keep them things aside. You know what I'm saying? Let them things out in the appropriate time. When it's right, 
then your butt cry. When that thing, when you can't do nothing else, then your butt cry. You'll see how that thing change. You'll see how that thing is. People know you as a person that don't cry and you let that tear out, whole world gonna move. That's what they gotta do. Whole world gotta, gotta move. That's how we gotta do it. You hear me? You keep that stuff in. You release it for your dad, you release it for your mom, you know what I'm saying? For your stepmom and your mom. Right? You release it for them. You release it for people that'll protect you. Not everybody out here got your interest. Right? That's why you don't tell the whole you don't tell everybody your business either. Cause not everybody out here got your interest. People will take people will take your business and use it against you. And they make it look like they're helping you. Right? Your family, they'll look out for you. Some of your friends, they'll look out for you. Right? But you gotta take your time and make sure you understand who will look out for you and who won't. A lot of these other people won't look out for you. Right? Some people mean good for you too. They don't even know that they hurt you. Some people try to help you and hurt you. Right? That's why we gotta outthink everybody. Otherwise, man, that's our death. That's our doom. Right? We gotta make sure we do this stuff. We gotta be better. You gotta be better than your dad. You hear me? Got to. So I gotta be better than me. Then y'all gotta compete with each other to be better than each other. And I ain't talking about being, being better in basketball. I'm talking about better at serving God. Right? Who can serve God the most? And you know what happens if you serve God? What do you mean when you serve God? That's a fact. That's a fact. You know what I'm saying? Serve God, though, the greatest person serving God is the one that serve all of us. Right? The greatest person serving God is the one that serve the, the people. So if you compete, let's say you and Zahar just competing, like who can serve God the most? I just want to see y'all serving each other. I'm going to serve you more than you serve me. That's a godly man. That's a man of God. And that's what I want y'all to see. You hear me? All right. Where we at? Uh, verse 3. All right, verse 3. Let's try to get through that. You running your darn mouth too. <laughs> Namely, five lords of the Philistines and all the Canaanites and the Sidonians and the Hivites that dwelt in Mount Lebanon from Mount Baal Hermon unto the entering of the into the entering of Haman. Uh -huh. And they were to prove Israel by them to know whether they would listen unto the commandments of the Lord which he commanded their fathers by the hand of Moses. Uh -huh. And the children of Israel lived among the Canaanites, Hittites, and the Amorites, the Perivites, and the Hivites, and Jebusites. Mm -hmm. And they took their daughters to be their wives. And he did what now? They took their daughters to be their wives. I could have swore that we was told specifically, don't make no marriages with these people. It's almost like we'd be thinking God don't know what he's talking about. Because, I mean, why did he tell us not to make marriages? We start serving their gods, huh? I don't know. Keep reading now, because I don't even think they're going to say nothing about that. That's crazy. And gave their daughters to their sons and served their gods. And did what? And served their gods. God called it again. But we just be thinking we so smart. Talk to me about no darn Bible. You know what I'm talking about? Unless you're going to read it. Let's read what's in it. Let's talk about it. I mean, you want to talk about the Bible, let's talk about it. Don't sit here and give me the voodoo either. You know what I'm saying? Well, actually, when they say sin in, that means a lifestyle of sin. Man, you know, get out of here with that. That Negro interpretation of the Bible. Bro, I ain't got no time for that. People just, I mean, that stuff just, that just, that thing kill all motivation to talk. I'd be like, okay, listen. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I've been down these roads before. I can't have it. Listen, if you can play that voodoo with the book, what am I going to say? If you can have written word right in front of you that's very clear about what it's saying, what am I going to say to convince you? That's killing time. You know what I'm saying? I don't think there's nothing I'm going to be able to say. I'm just going to have to prove that thing out. You know what I'm saying? Just pray to most our God that he let you see it, either from me or somebody else. Right? Anybody want to read? You know what I'm saying? Doom, 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 doom. <laughs> this one, this one, this one, you know what I'm saying? All the colors come on the screen, you know what I'm saying? You gotta hit the rainbow, you know what I'm saying? Thing. Rainbow, same thing. Like, get the little snow. I don't even think they got snow no more on the TV, you know? You can't find no snow on the TV no more. You don't really have the snow, you know what I'm saying? You don't get the antenna right, the whole thing just snow. They do it for a second, then it's gonna just go off. Yeah, hell, you know what I'm saying? Now that thing just, that thing just like, it's, I don't know. What the? Yeah, that thing skip now, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, this thing, uh, 
it's all attainable for us. You know what I'm saying? The Most High God, he told, he even told Moses. He was like, man, I didn't, I mean, uh, yeah, Moses even told us, you know what I'm saying? He's like, man, this thing ain't, it ain't so far in the sky that, you know what I'm saying, you got to like fly to go get it. You know what I'm saying? It ain't so deep in the sea that, you know what I'm saying, that you got to swim to go get it. You know what I'm saying? That thing right here. You know what I'm saying? A whole book opened up for us right here. And we got more than, we got more than what Moses and them got. We got the mystery. You know what I'm saying? That's that thing big. Like, we got the mystery. Like that thing opened up for us. You know what I mean? What cake? The cake that my mom made. You made a cake? Keep going. You know what I'm saying? Action. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and forgot the Lord their God and served Balaam in the groves. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he sold them into the hand of the of Cushan Rishthain, mm -hmm. king of Mesopotamia. And the children of Israel served Cushan Rishthain eight years. And when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, the Lord raised up a deliverer of the children of Israel. Who he raised up? To deliver them, even Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's mm. younger brother. Caleb's younger brother. Y'all remember Caleb, right? So remember Caleb, he was one of the 12 that went into the, the land of Canaan first, right? So 12 spied out the land. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Caleb, one of them. Caleb, Caleb and Joshua was the only one that was like, nah, we got this. We can do that. Everybody else was like, I don't know, man. These are some big folks. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if we can do it, right? So then as part of that, it was a promise to Caleb that whatever, wherever he laid his foot when he went into the land, that's his land. So when Joshua took him into the land, Caleb was one of the first ones that went out there and was like, yeah, this is me. You know what I'm saying? It's my land right here. All right, we read about that last week. Right? So Caleb got his land. So now this is Caleb's, what was it? Younger brother. His younger brother. This is Caleb's younger brother now. He was given as a judge. Oh, Caleb's nephew. You're right. Caleb's younger brother, son. Oh, okay. So it was, you know what I'm saying, his nephew, right? So he was given to the people as a judge. Now, we talked about what a judge is. What is really a judge in this sense? Uh, this is a judge would be someone that judges the matters. But in this, well, no, no this, in this sense, sense would be uh, the um, Avenger. Like an Avenger, yeah. right? So he, if somebody did something, you know what I'm saying? So we've been put in bondage because we start serving these people God. So the people start persecuting. Right? So whenever we in bondage, we are avenged by another man. You know what I'm saying? So he rose up, Othniel, right? He said, you know what? Go get him. So Othniel, go get him. You know what I'm saying? Let's read about it. And the land had rest 40 years, and Othniel, the son of Kenaz, died. Oh, then he died. Right? So we had rest for 40 years while he is alive, and then the man died. What else happened? And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. Mm -hmm. The Lord strengthened Eglon, the king of Moab, against Israel because they had done evil in the sight of the Lord. All right. So then we start doing the evil after the man died. And then Eglon was strengthened. Right. He is the king of Moab. So then Moab started getting out our butts. What else happened? And he gathered unto him the children of Ammon and Amalek and went, to, and went and smote Israel and possessed the city of palm trees. So then he joined up with two other nations and he said, let's team up against these folks and let's get them. To the children of Israel, our people, we then, you know what I'm saying, that our city of pine trees got taken over by these people. So let's see what else happened. So the children of Israel served Eglon, the king of Moab, 18 years. So then after that, now we become we become slaves and servants to the people. Right? How long? 18 years. 18 long years we slaves and we servants to these people. That's a hard thing to do. Alright? That's a hard thing to do. Let's see. But when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, the Lord raised them up a deliverer. Ehud. Okay. Who? Ehud. Mm, let's hear about the brother. The let's hear about our brother, Ehud. The son of Gera, a Benjaminite. He's a what? A Benjaminite. All right. Remember Benjamin? Yeah. All right. So we had 12 tribes. One of the tribes was Benjamin. Benjamin was what? The oldest or the youngest? The youngest. Very young. He would have been the youngest. Right? Who would have been the oldest? Reuben, right? Reuben would have been the oldest. Benjamin, he was he was the youngest. Right next to who? Uh, Joseph. Right next to Joseph. Right? What two tribes come from Joseph? Uh, Manasseh and Ephraim. 
Manasseh and Ephraim. Right? Remember, Joseph, you know what I'm saying? We passed this a little bit. But remember, Joseph went into Egypt. You know what I'm saying? He took rulership over Egypt. He was the lost son. Right? So when it, when it came time for Jacob to give his blessing to Joseph, what he did is he took, instead of taking Joseph, he took Joseph's two sons. Right? Switched his arms around. And he took Joseph's two sons as his own sons. TJ. Right? And then he kind of treated them as if they were the firstborn sons, even though they weren't. You know what I'm saying? So he gave them the birthright blessing as if they were the firstborn sons. So that means now when you look in the book, you'll see the tribe that runs the, the whole thing is Ephraim. Ephraim comes out of Joseph. Ephraim is not the oldest, but he's the representative of all the tribes. You know what I'm saying? We'll kind of get into that a little bit later. Let's see. Keep going. When the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, the Lord raised up a deliverer, Ehu, the son of Gera, a Benjaminite, mm -hmm. left-handed, a man left-handed. He was what left-handed? A man left-handed. Mm -hmm. Don't you be getting happy over there. You know what I'm talking about? Come on. And by him, the children of Israel sent a present unto Eglon, the king of Moab. Uh -huh. But Ehu made him a dagger. So, 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 so Ehu was a man who carried the present from Israel, Right? So it was a gift that we were sending, sending, sending to Eglon. Remember, we were Eglon's servants. You know what I'm saying? They had us in bondage. So we were sending a little gift to them. You know what I'm saying? And we had Ehu carry it for us. Let's hear what happened though. It's good. I like this one. But Ehu made him a dagger which had two edges. So he took a, he took a dagger with two edges on that thing. Right? And what did he do with that dagger? Of a cubit length, and he did, and he did gird it under his ring and upon his right thigh. All right? So you know what I'm saying? Cubic length, that's like this. You know what I'm talking about? So he had a, a dagger with two edges. That thing was like this. You know what I'm saying? About as long as my arm right here. You know what I'm saying? He took that thing. He said he girded that thing right on his. You know what I'm saying? He's left handed. He put that thing right on his right thigh. You know what I'm saying? But he left handed. You know what I'm saying? Book made it clear. It's a left handed man, but he put it on his right thigh. You know what I'm saying? So he put it, hit it. Let's see. I think it said he hit it. And he brought the present unto Eglon, king of Moab, and Eglon was a very was a very fat man. Uh huh. And when he had made an end to offer the present, he sent away the people that bear the present. Mm hmm. But he himself turned again from the queries that were by Gilgal and said, "I have a secret errand unto the king, right? Unto thee, O king." So he told the king, "He's like, I have a secret errand unto you, right? Let's hear about it." Who said, "Keep silence." And all that stood by him went out from him. Uh huh. And Ehu came unto him. And he was sitting in a summer parlor, which he had for himself alone. Right? So he said, look, I got a secret for you. Right? So the king was like, shh, shh, shh. Everybody else leave. Right? Because he didn't. I don't want nobody else to know about this here. Everybody else leave. Keep silent. Right? So they sat just alone. Let's watch what Ehu did. And Ehu said, I have a message from God unto thee. Mm-hmm. And he arose out of his seat. And Ehu put forth his left hand. Ehu did what? Put forth his left hand. Which hand? Left hand. Because the man is left-handed, right? And, All right, let's see. And took the dagger from his right thigh and thrust it into his belly. Boom! Hit him right in the darn belly with it. Right? Watch what happened. And the half also went in after the blade. Half went in after the blade. You know what I'm talking about? So that thing went deep in there. Watch what happened. He said this is a very fat man that he just stabbed. Watch what happened. And the... And the half also went in after the blade, and the fat closed upon the blade so that he could not draw the dagger out of his belly. He couldn't even get that thing out because all the fat just was like, you know what I'm saying, went around it. So the man stabbed, he got a dagger stuck inside of him. Big fat man, you know what I'm saying, and all this fat kind of just wrapped all the way around where the blade was. What else happened though? And the dirt came out. I don't know what that's talking about. What's dirt? Dirt? Feces. Poop. Right? Stab the man in his intestines and poop start coming out. That's disgusting. Right? The dirt. It's important what we're looking at. It's important what we're looking at. Give me Hebrews chapter 4. Let's talk about this a little bit. Whole book testify what? Oh, goodness gracious. Whole book testify to man. It's important what we're looking at. Mmm. Talk to him. 
Talk to him. It's Hebrews chapter 4. Give me verse 1. Like a double-edged what? No. Uh -oh. We can do some work now. It's Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1. Watch what the book says. Let us therefore fear, lest the promise being left of us, left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. Mm -hmm. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Mm -hmm. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest. Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh, on the, of the seventh day on this wise, mm -hmm. and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. Okay. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. Seeing therefore it remains that some must enter therein, and they to whom it is first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Okay. Again, he limits a certain day, saying in David, Today, after so long a time, as it is said, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Okay. For if Yahushua had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day. And when they say Yahushua, who is he talking about there? Uh, Joshua. He said Joshua, right? Because we just read how Joshua went, took us into the land and we took over the land. Yeah. So he's saying if Joshua had given them rest that day, then we wouldn't be talking about it right now. Right? Obviously he didn't because we read in Judges about how we don't have rest. How the land rested for how long? Uh, what? 40 years. And then came back and we've been in bondage for 18 years after that. So that's not rest. Right? Let's hear it. There remains therefore a rest to the people of God. There remains therefore a rest for the people of God. Right? That's what we're looking for. That's what we talking about. We talking about the real rest when we enter into the land and we good. I ain't talking about no 40 years good. I'm talking about like we good. When they come back, ain't nobody ever going to kick them out again. We good. Nobody messing with us. Let's see. Let's read it again. Let's see what we working with. For he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works as mm. God did from his. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest. Lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Okay. For the word of God is quick and powerful. And the sharp. word of God is what? Quick and powerful. When they say quick and powerful, that means fast? Okay, get to you. No, nah, it's a quick and powerful. It means it makes it's quick. Quick means it make a lot when you're reading in the Old Testament. Right? I mean in the, uh, in the Old English. You know what I'm saying? It means it make you alive. Literally so, it's, you know powerful. what I'm saying? It's quick. It's, that, thing, that thing alive in that butt up. And it's powerful. When you got something that's powerful, I mean, you got a gun that's powerful. What that mean? Kickback. That thing will kill your butt, too. Right? So it's something that uh, that thing will make you alive and that thing will kill you. Right? He's trying to let you know that thing quick and it's powerful. What else? And sharper than any two-edged sword. And it's sharper than what? Than any two-edged sword. Than any? Any two-edged What about e -huds? Absolutely. All right. Let's see. Keep going. Piercing even to the dividing asunder. It's piercing even to what? Dividing asunder. What? Of soul and spirit. Soul and spirit. And the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. That thing will break you all the way down. Right? That thing will pierce you all the way and it will separate your soul and your spirit. Your joints and your marrow. And it will it a darn work out your thoughts and all your intentions. Right, let's figure out what we're dealing with here. That's what the word do. That's why that thing can either make you alive, that thing be powerful enough to kill you. Right? You all right, ma'am? You good? I'm trying to make sure. It's Acts chapter 2. Let's see it in action. Set the context, right? Yahushua, you know what I'm saying, walked around, preached to the folks, you know what I'm saying, made some enemies, made some friends. You know what I'm saying, he went up to the cross, you know what I'm saying, hung there, died. You know what I'm saying? People took him down. He had buried three days, three nights. Man got up after three days, three nights. Started talking to the people a little bit. Talked to the people about 40 days. You know what I'm saying? And then, on the, uh, wasn't it 40 days? 50. The 50 days. No, nah, 40 days. It was 40 days. When he was up, he, yeah, walking, he was walking around. 40 yeah. days, yeah. It was 40 days. He was talking to him 40 days. Then, you know what I'm saying? He said, listen, y'all go ahead and tarry. The spirit gonna come. So then, 
he gone. Ten days later, on the fiftieth day, what we call Pentecost, you know what I'm saying? Uh, or well, what we call yeah. Feast of Weeks, you know what I'm saying? In, 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 in Greeks, you know what I'm saying? The Greek language, what they call it Pentecost, you know what I'm saying? The fiftieth day, you know what I'm saying? We'll look at that, and then uh, the Spirit came, you know what I'm saying? It landed on all our people, and when it landed on our people, we thought the people were darn drunk because it seemed like everybody was speaking a different language, you know what I'm saying? So they, everybody was speaking, and in in, in everybody could hear them in their native tongue. So, you know what I'm saying? So let's say I spoke, you know what I'm saying, Greek. You know what I'm saying? Let's say I spoke Greek. When the people spoke, I heard Greek. You know what I'm saying? But let's say he spoke, you know what I'm saying, Japanese. You know what I'm saying? Crete. Huh? Crete. 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 Crete? Yeah. No, Japanese. So, you know what I'm saying? He spoke Japanese. You know what I'm saying? It's my story. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Then he would hear him in Japanese, but the same person talking. So Daniel talking, I hear him in, in Hebrew. You know what I'm saying? He hear him in his native tongue, Japanese. Not the end. For you. No, you know what I'm saying? I was just trying to, you know what I'm saying? I was just trying to lay you know, story down. You know what I'm saying? There's no proof that it's factual. I mean, it might be, but you know. Anyway, though, you know what I'm saying? So you just lay that thing out, and he looking at it, and they like, man, these people darn drunk. So when everybody thought they were drunk, then Peter stood up. Right? Peter stood up and was like, nah, these brothers ain't drunk. Right? Give me Acts chapter 2, what I want. Verse, verse what, 20, uh, give me Acts chapter 2. Give me 14. We'll read a little bit. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lift up his voice and said unto them, ye men of Judah, uh -huh. and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, uh -huh. be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. Uh -huh. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. Uh-huh. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Uh-huh. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions. Okay. And your old men shall dream dreams. Okay. And on my servants and on my handmaids I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, beneath Blood and fire and vapor of smoke. So, so notice what he did. He talking to the people, and he's starting to preach to them. He's like, "Listen, this is what this is." And the first thing he do is bring out what? Scripture. Scripture. Right? A lot of people don't. A lot of people say it's like, "Why do y'all?" You know what I'm saying? Why do y'all? Because we do it like the books they do it. Right? The man didn't get to just run his mouth. No, no, no. Y'all don't understand. See, this is the prophecy. It was prophesied. This that. No, no, no. He said. This is what Joel said. Let me read it to you. Or let me quote it to you. Right? Same thing that we try to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, let's separate that. We ain't just running our mouths up here. I'll prove it out. Right? Let's hear the book. And all my servants and all my handmaids where I poured out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonder in heaven, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. Before that great and notable day of the Lord come. Mm. Let's talk about it. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Yahushua of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, mm -hmm. which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Mm -hmm. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, uh -huh. ye have taken. Uh huh. And by wicked hands have crucified and slain, mm -hmm. whom God has raised up, having loosed the pains of death, uh -huh. because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. Okay. For David speaks concerning him. Look at that. He quote more scripture. All right. He said, David speak concerning them. Mark him quote the psalm. I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Uh huh. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Uh huh. Moreover also, my flesh shall rest in hope. Uh huh. Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither will thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. Okay. Thou hast made known to me the way of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with, with your countenance. Uh huh. Men and brothers. Look, he quoted that whole thing. After he got done, he said, Men and brothers. Right? Let me talk to y'all for a little bit. Can I freely speak unto you. Can I freely? Look, I've been quoting the book. You know what I'm saying? I've been trying to prove this thing out. I hope I laid enough foundation here. Can I freely speak to you now? Now you get into that word. Let's hear about it. Of the patriarch David that is both dead and buried and his sepulcher is with us <laughs> unto this day. He said, of the patriarch that, of our father David? That man is darn dead. 
and it but a darn berry. And you can see his grave sight to this day. Hear about it. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him uh -huh. that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up the Messiah to uh -huh. sit on his throne. Watch this. He seeing this before spake of the resurrection of the Messiah, uh -huh. that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. He said, don't be silly. Don't be silly. David, we can go to his grave site right now. As a prophet, he was speaking. Talking about the man y'all just darn killed. Go to his grave site. So Betty ain't there. He to let him know. What y'all read and y'all was applying to David, we can see David's grave site. So what David was talking about in this psalm must not have been about David. Because it's a man that y'all just killed. If you go to his grave site, that thing empty. He is like, David was a prophet. Y'all know that, right? Let's hear about it. He's this is how you break down some words. He right? seeing this before spake of the resurrection of the Messiah, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. Uh huh. This Yahushua has God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. Uh huh. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this which ye now see and hear. Uh huh. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith of himself. The Lord said to my Lord, sit thou on my right hand uh -huh. until, I make More thy, scripture. until I make thy foes thy footstool. Uh -huh. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made that same Yahushua whom you have crucified. Who you but crucified. Both Lord and Messiah. He made him both the master and the Messiah. What else? Now, when they heard this, they were pricked. But in when their they heart. heard this, they were what? Pricked in their heart. What's a prick? What's that? That word cut they butt. The things are two edged sword. They can get up in you and darn cut you. But let's see what the result is. Once the word cut them, let's see what happened to them. He said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? What do we do now? The confidence that Yahushua had to just step up in there and be like, Man, Give me to death. I'm serving God. Give me to death. What does that turn into? That turned into a man being able to lay it out for people, point to that same man, be like, oh, that was the one. And because he stayed steadfast in what he had to do, now it's a good representation. The people hear that word, they say, man, just tell me what we, what do we do? You know what I'm saying? Like, give me the information. What do we do? I don't know anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't realize all this stuff. What do I do next? What should, what should I do to fix this? Right? That word prick you. Now, what did it do? But, let's go to chapter 5. Let's see, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes that thing cuts you and you have a different reaction. This is uh, Acts chapter 5. I think verse 33 is what I want. It's Acts chapter 5, verse 33. Let me try to shoot through the rest of this. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. Right? So same type of situation. You know what I'm saying? Before all this, I think it was Peter again. You know what I'm saying? He's talking, you know what I'm saying? Letting them know what was going on. And after that, books say that what happened? Verse 33? And took counsel to slay them. Now, read it, start from the beginning. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. So at that time, they got cut to the heart, same way. But their response was, oh, we got to kill these boys. Right? We got to kill these boys. So just because it cut you, you don't always, because sometimes that thing got power to kill you, sometimes that thing got power to make you alive. Right? The same God can be to two separate people, different things. Grab, grab uh, Luke 20. Give me Luke 20. Give me Luke chapter 20. Give me verse uh, 17. Watch this. Right? Same God can be two different things to you. I ain't saying it like the Christian, you know what I'm saying? Like, I have a personal relationship with God. I mean, this is who God is to me. I ain't talking about like that. You know what I'm saying? You let a Christian tell you, you know, God be anything. You know, they got a whole bunch of different things he can be to you. That's your interpretation. Yeah, no, he ain't, we ain't talking about that. God gonna be one or two things to you. You know what I'm saying? He gonna be the God that's gonna send your butt to hell, or he gonna be the God that's gonna send you to the kingdom. That's about it. But the same God can be one of those two things to you. Right? A God that punishes you or, or a God that blesses you. Right? Watch this. This is uh, uh, 
Luke chapter 20, verse 17. And he beheld them and said, What is this then that is written? The stone which the builders rejected, the same is become the head of the corner. Right? So that's, <coughs> he just quoted scriptures. He was like, The stone that the builders rejected, right? The stone that the builder didn't want, that same stone became the main stone for setting up the building. Right? We were looking at this stone like, Oh, no, that one ain't right. You know what I'm saying? I don't want that one. And in the end, that's the very stone that was the most important piece for setting up the whole building. Right? The stone that the builders rejected became the stone of the head of the corner. Right? Keep going. Whosoever shall fall upon that stone shall be broken. He said, whoever falls on that stone shall be broken. But whomever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. But whoever shall, shall on it it falls, or whoever the stone falls on, that thing gonna grind their butt to powder. Which one you want? Same stone now, but that same stone is two different things to do different people. Which one you want? Eli, which one you want? Eli ain't old enough. I mean, Adrian. Come here, let me talk to you real quick. Let me talk to you, Adrian. You all right? No. You not all right? <laughs> let me see your arm. Can I have your arm? So, like, if you had to choose one, you know what I'm saying? I'll take your arm, and I'll just snap that thing in half and just break it. Or i stick it, like, stick it inside of this grinder, and it just turn to crush all your bone, to crush everything, and just turn it into a bunch of powder. Which one would you want? You want it broken, or you want it turned into powder? Um, you want it broken? That's a wise man. Right? That's a wise man. We look at it, that thing just makes sense. I mean, neither, neither one of them is ideal. But to tell me I'm going to be ground to powder, it just feels like it ain't no coming back from being ground to powder now. You break it, I mean, I can get a little sling. You know what I'm saying? You get a little sling walking around. It's a little embarrassing. You know what I'm saying? You got a little sling on. You know what I'm saying? You go like this. You trying to point and you couldn't. You know what I'm saying? Not know about it. You know what I'm saying? It should be like, you know what I'm saying? You all right. You got that thing. That thing, you know what I'm saying? It'd be all right. You know what I'm saying? You just got to deal with it. But to grind that thing into powder? That thing done it. You do that. Ain't nobody going to put it... Who, how you gonna put it back together and you gotta grind it back in the power? I mean you gotta put you gotta put all these different things. Somebody gotta try to figure it out. I don't know if they got any medicine, I don't know if they got any techniques that a doctor can put together. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if that's happening right now. Right? So we have to be able to put ourselves in a position where we gonna fall on the stone. I mean, I'm sorry, yeah, we're gonna fall on the stone and become broken. All of it gonna hurt. You notice that it ain't it ain't a situation that's been laid out yet that just feel good. That's why you can't trust these Christians. It's not a situation yet. He said this the the, the word is like a two-edged what? Sword. I'm trying to figure out in what world did that feel good. I don't care what you do with a darn sword, ain't nothing gonna feel good. You can be shaving yourself, you're still gonna cut yourself a little bit. Oh, good gracious. Right? Ain't nothing gonna feel good. Let's see. Grab a, uh, grab a, uh, grab a uh, Luke chapter sixteen. Luke chapter eighteen. Luke chapter eighteen. Give me verse fifteen. It's Luke chapter eighteen. Give me verse fifteen. Adrian, which one you say? You say you rather a broken arm, huh? Give me Luke. And they brought unto him also infants that he would touch them. He said, brought unto him infants that he would touch them, right? But when his disciples saw it, they rebuked them. They rebuked the little. Like, don't be bringing them infants. Don't be bringing them babies. What happened? But Yahshua called them unto him and said, Suffer little children to come unto me. Uh-huh. And forbid them not. He said, don't. He said, don't. Don't stop them now. He said, suffer the little children to come to me and don't stop them. Why? For of such is the kingdom of God. All right? Adrian ain't silly. That's why we ask no question. What you want? You want? You want broken or you want ground to powder? Oh, he ain't even hesitate. Adrian ain't even take a little bit of time. He just look at uh, what broken or ground to powder. I'll take the broken. Right? He, he, he just look at I'll take the broken. You know what I'm saying? He ain't darn silly. He said that's the mind. Grab a, grab a, grab a, grab a 1 Corinthians chapter 14 real quick. Right? These kids had a simple wisdom. You know what messed us up? 
all these lies, all these little details that people try to give us. So we got to be wise. We have to become wise. But even if they're through that wisdom, we become confused. So stuff as simple as it is for Adrian, you know what I'm saying? That stuff become more complex with us. We got to deal with more factors. And then dealing with more of those factors, our decisions become off. Now we'll get to rationalize. I mean, well, you know what I'm saying? If I get ground into powder, I mean, at least I don't have to deal with it no more. That's the type of stupid stuff people be saying. You know what I'm saying? See, people be saying some stuff. They be rationalizing some stupid stuff. I mean, well, at least, you know what I mean? I mean, at least I had to go through that so I can get to where I am today. Like, okay. That's where you at, huh? <laughs> right? We can't be rationalizing stuff. We got to go with the Most High God. Say, the man Most High God said, you either going to be broken or you're going to be ground in the powder. Which one you want? Don't be stupid. You want to be broken. Don't nobody want to sit here and get ground in the powder? Right? That's why we gotta that's why the book say we gotta come on to them just like these kids. He said, don't forbid these kids from coming to me. You know what I'm saying? Anybody who's gonna make it into the kingdom gonna accept it like these kids accept it. What's wrong with y'all? At the same time, where's what I said? This is first Corinthians chapter, what did I say? 14? Mm -hmm. What verse? 20? Give me 14, 20. Brother, and be not children in understanding right we accept the most high god as children but he said be not what children in understanding when it comes to how your understanding work don't be children no we got to accept them and then we got to grow right otherwise that same simple thinking when it comes to when it comes to the world trying to make everything complex for us that's when we get thrown off right that's when we get thrown off when we accept the most high God, we gotta come on to him like children. After that though, we can't we can't stay like children, right? We gotta grow in it. Alright? We can't be children in our understanding of the word. Grab uh grab Jeremiah chapter 8. Let's talk about it. It's Jeremiah chapter 8. You know what I'm saying? He hood. He had it. Double-edged sword. You know what I'm saying? Stuck him with that thing. All this fat just like trying to cover it. You know what I'm saying? And after that, the dirt came out. Mm, just nasty. All right? Just nasty. That sword will cut you. Though. Sword will open you up. All types of stuff might start coming out. Will you not fear me? All right? All types of stuff just start coming out. You got to figure out what you're going to do with it. That thing might just kill you. Might just make you alive. All right? Let's see what happens. Hey, Jeremiah chapter 8, give me verse 1. At that time, says the Lord, they shall bring out the bones of the kings of Judah. They're going to do what? Bring out the bones of the kings of Judah. They're going to bring out the bones of the kings of Judah. And the bones of his princes. And the bones of the rulers of Judah. And the bones of his priests. And the bones of the priests of Judah. And the bones of the prophets. And the bones of the prophets of Judah. And the bones of the inhabitants of Jerusalem out of their graves. And all the inhabitants of Jerusalem out of their graves. They're going to take all of us. And then what are they going to do? They shall spread them before the sun and the moon and all the hosts of heaven whom they have loved and whom they have served. They're going to put them out all over the ground, right underneath the moon and the sun. Because we just love the moon and the sun so much. Reading our darn horoscopes, following the darn sun gods, putting stars at the top of our trees, all this stuff. He said, y'all love the sun so much y'all be sending against me. I tell you what. I'm going to have these people take all your graves out. That's why when they dig up in Israel now, they have a hard time finding bones. They be like, man, why can't we find? That's why for a while they didn't believe Israel was a real thing. They're like, well, no, if Israel was a real thing, we'd be able to find their bones. I was like, well, if y'all read the book, y'all know why y'all can't find the bones. Man already told you, he's going to have these people take all their bones out and spread them all out. All over the land. All over everywhere. Our bones mixed in with all these other people in that area. They wouldn't know what they're looking at. You're looking at a darn bone. How you gonna know an Israelite bone? You ain't never seen an Israelite. You think these white folks is Israelites. And you gonna think you gonna, you gonna be able to tell an Israelite bone from a Canaanite bone? <coughs> you lost your darn mind. You ain't gonna be able to tell nothing. Your butt spinning around darn trying to figure it out. I can help you out though. I ain't gotta look at one bone. I can help you out. Book tell you what happened with the bones. They pulled them all out the grave. 
They have a hard time. They find some. They, they have a hard time finding them, though. Matter of fact, when they say they found them, it might not be our. You might think it's ours. It might not be ours. Books say they took all our grades, ours, ripped our stuff up. The prophets, you ain't going to find no prophet. I'll tell you what, if you find something, it must have been outside of Jerusalem. It said all the people in Jerusalem, they bones out. I believe the word. I'm not about to sit here and play with the word. You find something, I don't know. That wasn't, that wasn't Israelite you found. You probably found something. You know what I'm saying? That was probably some Gentile that was hanging out in the area or something. Israelite bones? Take them things out. Spread them out. Let's hear about when we spread them out. What happened? And all the hosts of heaven, whom they have loved, uh -huh. and whom they have served, and after whom they have walked, uh -huh. and whom they have sought, uh -huh. and whom they have worshipped, uh -huh. they shall not be gathered, nor be buried, nor be buried. Uh -huh. They shall be for dung upon the face of they the earth. They shall be for what? Dung upon the face of the earth. So when you know, when that knife went in them, you know what I'm saying? He stuck him with that knife. His big fat boy, all the darn fat covered the knife. He couldn't even pull that thing out. Then guess what? What else came after that? The dirt. The dirt came out. You know what that dirt was? Poop. He stuck him so so deep with that dagger that poop came out. It's a big fat man. Poop started coming out. That's gross. That's gross, ain't it? You know what else is gross? When the word stuck us, because we didn't listen. Most high God said, I'm gonna take all your bones out. You know how I'm gonna leave it sitting out there? Like poop. When the word hits you, your butt get exposed. That's how he did us. He exposed us. That's what the condition that we in now. Right? We in a condition of being exposed. Watch. Watch this. Tell me this ain't us. And death shall be chosen rather than life. He said what's going to be chosen? Death gonna be, it shall be chosen rather than life. That ain't us. By all the residue of them that remain of this evil family which remain. I mean, I mean only in Israel? Keep going. Which remain in all places where I have driven them, says the Lord of hosts. He said, in all places where I took these people, all the places where I drove these people out, death is going to be, they'll choose death. Read that part again. And death shall be chosen rather than life by all the residue of them that remain of this evil family, which remain in all the places where I've driven them. Guess what? Says the Lord of hosts. Just recently, you know what they said? Over the last like 10 years, 15 years, something like that. The suicide rate rate of children, black children, has grown to be almost twice the suicide rate of white people. White people had us beat with suicide right now, right? They had us beat, right? They had like 18 percent. We was like six percent overall. But when it comes to the children, they say that thing way up. Guess what? With adults, adults still got a lower a lower suicide rate than. than Black adults, you know what I'm saying, and, and, uh, and the white folks according to the stats. But when you take into consideration our our lifestyle, right? Just like I was talking about earlier, we are ready to die, not for anything significant. Just based off of the fact you looked at me the wrong way, oh. right? You from a different neighborhood than me. I'm ready to die. You look at Tupac. What was that new kid that just died? I forget, but I know what you're talking about. The ex dude. Yeah. Right? They say all his music is about dying. Right? Just ready to die. Tupac, that's all the man talked about. Ready to die. Biggie. Biggie, that's all he talked about. Ready to die. Right? So much of that. Right? And you know why people tune into that music? Because they resonate with it. Me personally. Ready to die. Just did silly stuff. I'm like, oh, well, whatever happens. Guns right there in my face. Mm, well, shoot then. What you gonna do? Why? Cause I didn't see myself. You know what I'm saying? I remember one, me, me, one time me and T, we sitting here. We about to walk into this party. Dude pull a gun out on us. And I take off running. I'm just like, boom. So I get back and I look at T. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, why you take off running? This is after T just had his son. Right? He was like, man, I got a son, bro. Like, bro, I got a son. I got to be here for my son. That's the hope. Before that, we didn't have that. We probably would have been dead. Like, if T didn't run, if T would have run, we probably would have been dead that time. But it's just because he had hope for something else. He said, I got to see my son through. If I die, my son ain't got nobody. Or I ain't, ain't going to say he ain't got nobody. But you know what I'm saying? But he, that's my son. I'm going to be there. 
right? That's how we look at this. It takes that hope. When we ain't got that hope, guess what? I'm ready to die. I'll choose death, right? It's no problem for me. I'll choose death rather than life. Why not? That's the attitude of our people. Why? Because the word touched us. You know what I'm saying? Word touching it exposed our poop. Right? That double-edged sword exposed our poop. I ain't gonna say nothing. That's you, bro. That's my car? Yeah. Well, maybe it ain't. No, it ain't. I don't know who car that is. I'm like right here, right? I'm like right there. Somebody. Oh, definitely. I don't like all that stuff happening at one time. Right. You know I'm saying somebody else about to choose death right now. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? But know what's going on. And he got on a do rag too. chapter 49, give me verse 1. Isaiah chapter 49, verse 1. Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken ye people from afar. He said, Listen, O isles, unto me, hearken ye people from afar. The Lord has called me from the womb. From uh -huh. the bowels of my mother has he made mention of my name. Uh huh. And he hath made my mouth like a sharp sword. He made my mouth like what? A sharp sword. Talking about that word. He said, He made that mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand has he hid me. He said, He hid him. Remember, mm. you remember Ehud? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He is like, All right, I'm going to take that gift. You know what I'm saying? I'm left-handed, though. Put that thing right over here. Put it under his garment. Then he, he hid it under the book. Say he hid it under his garment. Right? Then he went in, caught him flipping, stabbed him with the left hand. You know what I'm saying? Then the dung was exposed. You know what I'm saying? Let's read about it. And made me a polished shaft. Okay. In his quiver has he hid me. Okay. And said unto me, You are my servant, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. Uh-huh. Then I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for naught and in vain. Yet surely my judgment is with the Lord and my work with my God. Uh huh. And now says the Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him. Through Israel be not, though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. Uh huh. And he said, it is a light thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribe. This is the most high God speaking back. This is talking about Yahweh Shua. Right? So this is the most high God talking back to Yahweh Shua. He said, it's a light thing that you what? Should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob. Uh-huh. And to restore the preserved of Israel. Uh-huh. I will also give thee for a light unto the Gentiles that you may be my salvation unto the end of the earth. He said, I'm going to give you as a light to the Gentiles that you might be my salvation to the end of the earth. What else? Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and His Holy One. Uh-huh. To him whom man despises, to him whom the nation abhors. Uh-huh. To a servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise. Princes also shall worship because of the Lord that is faithful and the Holy One of Israel, and he shall choose thee. Uh -huh. Thus says the Lord, in an acceptable time have I heard thee, and in a day of salvation I help thee. Uh -huh. And I will preserve thee and give thee for a covenant of the people to establish the earth, to cause thee to inherit the desolate heritages. All right? So you see, 
the same word, the same sword that's hidden, going to bring salvation to people. Same sword going to bring in judgment to people. All right? Give me Romans chapter 2. <coughs> Give me Romans chapter 2. Just real quick. I forgot all about it. Romans chapter 2. I think I want like verse 6. We ain't got to read the whole thing. Give me like verse 6. Maybe verse 5. Give me verse 5. It's Romans chapter 2, verse 5. I didn't even know they made do rags still. <laughs> you got the whole cape hanging out too. Hey, look, look, gotcha. Good gracious. It's super fly now. All right, then, yeah, yeah, you call it then. Don't let me tell you nothing. It's uh, Romans chapter two. Give me verse uh, five. That's when it comes off the couch. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart, treasures up thy wrath. treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and mm -hmm. revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Okay. Who will render it to every man according to his deeds. Okay. To them who by patient continuance and well doing seek for glory and honor and immortality. So listen. Life. To them who by patience continuing and well doing seek for honor and glory and immortality. What? Eternal life. Eternal life. But to them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, uh -huh. but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath. Indignation. So if you do the right thing, he said, you get eternal life. But if you don't, indignation and you get wrath, right? Who does that go to? Disobedience. Keep going. Tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that does evil in the, in the indignation verse. and wrath, right? Tribulation and anguish to every soul that works disobedience. To what? To the Jew first. To the Jew first. So that thing got to go to the Hebrew first, right? To the Israelite first. And, also and then of the Gentile. And after that, the Gentile. It makes sense because if you look at what we just read in Isaiah 49, it said, I'm going to give you to the people. You're going to redeem Jacob. He said, I'm the word. You put the word in me and you hit me like, you know what I'm saying, like a little sword. Right? And I'm going to give you to the people. But then after that, I'm going to make you a light to all the Gentiles. Who to go to first? The Hebrew Jew. All right, keep going. For there is no respect of persons with God. There's none. For as many have sinned without law shall also perish without law. That's, that's book, right? So you look at him, he's saying, look, that thing going to go to the Jew first, then the Gentile. Either way you want it. The wrath going to go to the Jew first, then the Gentile. But what about the blessings? It's going to go to the Jew first and then the Gentile. No matter how you lay it out, whatever it is, it's going to the Jew first, to the Gentile. So right now, we under God's sword, right? His double-edged sword. He, he stuck us. He pricked our hearts with it. We exposed we dealing with all the calamity of God's judgment. We sitting in this land right now with all our stuff exposed, with all our dung, our, all our poop exposed. The things that we ashamed of just exposed, right? We made a mockery on TV every day, right? They shoot us down every darn day, it seems like. Hold they self darn guiltless, right? Every time a cop shoot us down, you know what they say? They get that cop time to check out the scene, review what they gonna present as the evidence, and clean up. They give them time to clean up their Facebook pages before they release. So you know, how, you know how they like take a long time to release the the cop's name every time. It's like you know what I'm saying the cop's name hasn't been released yet when they shoot us down. All that time, what they doing? If they allow that cop time to go clean up all their social media, all their Facebook pages. That was the latest lady tried to do the one that, that ran up in the man house and shot. You know what I'm saying? Shot the man and tried to say that she thought it was her house. Silly stuff, right? They let her clean up her page. You know, it's one she forgot. She forgot her Pinterest. You know what I'm saying? They started looking at her Pinterest page, though. You know what I'm saying? Somebody stumbled on that thing. They felt all types of stuff about, you know what I'm saying? How, you know what I'm saying? People who, who yeah, how, 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 like, how she, like, talking about angry, you know what I'm saying? I just shoot a person or MF up for this and this, that, and the other. She is talking crazy, talking about how violent she is. You know what I'm saying? Somebody do something that, like this to me, I'll just shoot them. So it shows her violence and her attitude. They're like, oh, we didn't want that to get out. Right? They didn't want that to get out. This one, this might be one of the ones they actually send to jail. We'll see what happens, though. You know what I'm saying? We'll see what happens. But yeah, it, it looked like the police looking like uh, 
yeah, I don't think we can help you too much. They fired her, but you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, let's go ahead and disinter right now. Right? Because they looking at it like, I don't know if we can win this one. Not in this climate. Right? But that's what they do, right? They hold themselves guiltless for all this stuff. Right? Back and forth, back and forth, this thing go for us. Right? They feel like we make a little bit of progress. They take our butt all the way back. Why? Because we under the double-edged sword of the Most High God. That word touches. Right? That same word that can make good for us, make us alive. Same good word that's powerful to kill us. Right? But, now that we in that state, guess what? Eventually, because it comes to the Jew first, eventually that's going to turn around to the Gentile. Right? Grab Romans 11 for me. It's Romans chapter 11. Give me verse 5. Nah, give me verse 1. It's Romans chapter 11, verse 1. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham. I'm an Israelite of the seed of Abraham. Of the tribe of Benjamin. Of the tribe of... I ain't going to say I'm a tribe of Benjamin. But he said he the tribe of Benjamin, y'all. God is not... Who else was the tribe of Benjamin? Uh, Ehud. Mm, Ehud. Ehud had that double-edged sword coming out of Benjamin. Paul said, what you talking about? I'm of the tribe of Benjamin. You don't think Paul knew about Ehud? Paul knew his law. He knew his, he knew his history. Right? Watch this. God has not cast away his people which he foreknew. Uh-huh. What ye not what the scripture said of Elijah? How he made intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. Mm -hmm. But what says the answer of God unto him? Mm -hmm. I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee unto the image of Baal. Mm -hmm. Even so then, at this present time also, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. Uh -huh. And if by grace, then is it no more of works. Okay. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. That's right. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. Okay. But what then? Israel has not obtained that Zakai, which it seeks for. But the election has obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Mm -hmm. According as it is written, God has given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that should not see and ears that should not hear. That's where we are right now. Day. That's where we are right now. We in the spirit of slumber. Right? We got eyes that we won't see. You know what I'm saying? You can present this stuff. You can present all these facts to our people. And they sit there and look at I'm a Jedi. tell you flat footed. I'm a Gentile. I ain't no Hebrew. Right? Because they have eyes that will not see and ears that will not hear. They ain't trying to hear this foolishness. Right? Watch this. Keep going. And David said, let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. What? Let their table. What does that mean? Let their table become a snare. Oh. They table. Why would why would that make sense for our people? Let their table become a trap. We are feast. Mm. You know, we get together. I mean, we celebrate Christmas not because we believe in Santa Claus. What is Christmas really about for us? They say it's Jesus' birthday. Presents. What else? I mean, I mean, I mean, we can we can prove them out. Right? We can prove them out and be like, no, this really ain't about Jesus Christ. I mean, we lay out all the facts. And then what they say back to us. At first, they be like, no, it's about this Jesus day. Then we lay out all the facts. And we get that Jesus stuff out of the way. Well, really, it's about family. You know? I mean, it's just about family. It's a tradition. Coming together. Right? Our table is a snare. <laughs> right? We come together over food. Thanksgiving. All these things. Every one of these days, guess what we doing? <coughs> Eat. Our table is a snare. He said, let their table be a snare. What do you think he's talking about? Right? Keep going. Watch this. And a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. Mm -hmm. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their back always. Mm -hmm. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. He said, have they stumbled that they should fall? In other words, have they stumbled so that they won't be able to get back up? God forbid. What else? But rather through their fall, salvation is coming to the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. You see that? So now we see what Isaiah 49 was talking about. That sword goes to the Israelites. Right? 
then that ends up being a light to the Gentiles. So now you got all these Gentiles, right? Just think about think about the logic of history, right? Think about the logistics, I mean, of history, right? You looking at Israelites who are in one small country. Then Romans took them over, took them into their country as slaves, spread them over into Africa. From there, at the same time, Gentiles were being taught the word, got half taught the word. But they're like, no, nah, this kind of works. They co-opted it, right? And they start teaching it all around the world. In the name of Christianity, they didn't killed and conquered a whole bunch of stuff. So now you go into Mexico, guess what? Christians. You go any place in South America, Christians. You take your butt to the Philippines, guess what? Christians, right? Catholics, right? You take your butt over into Guam. Take your butt into Hawaii. What do you got? Hawaii a little more stubborn. You know what I'm saying? But what you got? Christians. All these different places. Because they ain't conquered these places and taught these Gentiles our book. Kind of. Right? So now, they looking lost, right? But they're familiar with the book at least. So now when that sword turns around to their butt, guess what they do? When we was disobeying God, we were familiar with the book, but disobeying God and the sword turned to us, eventually what happens to us? We straighten up. Eventually. We ain't got there yet. But eventually our butt's going to straighten up. So then when that sword goes back and goes to the Gentile, they got to see what happened to us. How much longer you think it's going to take them as long to straighten up? Absolutely not. Nah, we've seen this before. Let's go ahead and straighten up right now, y'all. If I send you to a people that didn't know your language, they listen to you. They going to straighten their butt up so quick. And watch this. You'll see it. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall, God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is coming to the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. Mm -hmm. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? For I speak to you, Gentiles, and as much as I am an apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office. Mm -hmm. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh, that might save some of them, mm -hmm. and might save some of them, for if the casting away of them be of the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? There you go. So now, by us being cast away, it introduced the world to the Most High God. So when we, then when the sword comes to us for good, what does that turn into? Reconciliation. That's the resurrection of the dead. He trying to let you know, when that thing changed for us, Everybody, that, that's a chance for everybody. That's when the thing over. Right? So that's how you know the Gentiles going to get it quick. The ones that going to be saved at least. They going to get that thing quick. They ain't about to kill a whole bunch of time. They going to look at that like, oh, that that what the Hebrew went through? The 400 years? This 2,000 years the Hebrew been going through that? Oh, okay, no, we got the picture. We know, no, nah, we know what type of God we dealing with. We got the picture. And then it's resurrection of the dead time. It ain't gonna be none of that. You know what I'm saying? No, they, the color don't matter. Yeah. Everybody's equal. Oh, oh, you guys are good now. No. no. They, they, gonna, can, they gonna be they be hopping on the good they, foot. They be trying to act like we're gonna get treated that bad. But they, right? They gonna be hopping on the good foot. They gonna be like, listen, we got the plane ticket. Don't worry. Like I told y'all, Guam, I mean, not Guam, uh, what's it called? Ghana? I read about that. Yeah, Ghana, they got that thing out. They say year 2019 is the year of return. African Americans bring y'all butts back to Africa. You know what I'm saying? That thing kind of made me salty. Like, why now? Some of our people, some of our people, like, but should I go? Now, should I go? Why you know what I'm going to go? You know what I'm going to go? When a group of Gentiles say, we got your ticket. <laughs> right? And then they got to take care of all the poor folks, too. Yeah. Because I know, I serve the most high God now. I know the man ain't just setting it up for the people that can afford to go. He going to set it up for the poor, too. When I can see, okay, poor people taken care of. Okay, this, that, not. All right, just line up the word. I'll hop on the plane. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? Book said the Gentiles are going to carry us over in what? Swift beast. I mean, that thing got to be a Jaguar. You know what I'm saying? That thing. You have that boom, I'm riding the back of that thing. You know what I'm saying? I just imagine that by that time I got like long hair or something. That thing just blowing. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you got the Gentile. You never know. You know what I'm saying? You never darn know. Randy ain't going to never have long hair. You can forget it. <laughs> that thing, forget it. Y'all see Randy, Daddy? Oh, no. Uh, you can forget it. <laughs> that thing not, let me tell you something. That thing not happening. You know what I'm saying? 
I'm happy he made it this far. You never know. At any moment, that thing could just be like, you know what I'm saying? He going to be wearing that do-rag all the time. Ain't nobody going to know. Underneath that thing, that thing done. You know what I'm saying? He talking right now. You know what I'm talking about? They ain't look like somebody's elbow. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know, that thing ain't happening. You know what I'm saying? You gotta let that thing happen. But no, nah, but uh, you look at it and it's important for us, right? It's important for us that we able to see the effects of what the most high God have, right? When he put that sword on us, that thing good, but that thing never feels good when it's happening. That thing gonna cut you and that thing gonna expose you. It's gonna show all your dirt. It's gonna show everything that you done done. Now it's about how you respond to that. Are you gonna respond to that by saying, you know what, let me clean this up? Or are you gonna respond to that and say, you know what? Let's get these folks. All right? Let me attack the people that hit me with the word. Most high God never gonna bring you to the I don't say never. You know what I'm saying? You shouldn't expect the most high God to come bring the word himself. All right? You shouldn't expect it. It's always gonna be a test. Always gonna be a test. All right? You're gonna expect it from a man of God to bring it to you. Or a woman of God, and that's a different type of test. You know what I'm saying? A woman of God, you a man and a woman of God bring you the word? That's a different type of test. You might want to be like, yeah, yeah, all right. You know what I'm saying? It was a girl today, you know what I'm saying? She was out there, she was trying, she it like she she was breaking down some word too. You know what I'm saying? She was talking to these brothers, you know what I'm saying? They was like, yeah, this time. I think they were talking about that Ghana 2019 thing. She was like, yeah, it can't be true. I was reading her post at first. I think they said, it can't be true. And she was like, because Deuteronomy this. I said, oh, that's it. I ain't got, I ain't reading that thing no more. I was like, dude, oh no. All I saw was dude. I was like, dude, oh, no, that's it. We good. I ain't gonna tell anybody. She can't teach me no word. I told my mom that thing one time. My mom down there? Mama didn't come? Yeah, I told my mom that thing one time. She got all offended. She's like, see, that thing. I was like, listen, that thing ain't personal. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people would be thinking like, oh, you just a prideful man. You think you can't learn something. Listen, my boss at work is a woman. She would tell you, she say do it, that thing get done. I ain't got a problem. My, uh, my, uh, my, uh, I don't know. I got all types of women that have been in authority position. I ain't got no problem with having a woman in authority, personally. <laughs> but when it comes to this book, ain't nothing personal about it. Books say, don't have it happen, I ain't about to play with it. It don't make sense for me. It just don't make sense for me to go out of order with what the books say. Not, not, and I know the man got the words of life. You got the words that teach me how to get life. You tell me don't do something a certain way. Mm, I'm going to take your word for it. I'm just going to take your word for it. All right, let's finish up Judges. Judges, chapter, where we leave off in Judges? It's Judges chapter 3, what, verse? 22. You know about 22? It's Judges chapter 3, verse 22. I think it's only like 30, 40 verses in here. So we'll just finish this up and then we'll get up out of here. It judges chapter 3 verse 22 watch what the book say and the haft also went in after the blade and the fat closed upon the blade so that the so that he could not draw the dagger out of his belly, uh -huh. and the dirt came out. And the dirt came out of that boy. And then Ehu went forth through the porch, uh -huh. and shut the doors of the parlor upon him, and locked him. Mm -hmm. When he was gone out, his servants came, and when they saw that, behold, the doors of the parlor were locked, they said, surely he covers his feet in, in his summer chamber. What does that mean, he covers his feet? He pooping. He thought, he thought he had taken a poop. Why would they think he'd taken a poop? The door was locked. That? Took, and took what him, else? Took him a while. Probably had a smell. Had a smell. Why would he have a smell? Because the dirt came out. Because the dirt came out of that boy. You know what I'm saying? He stabbed him so darn hard, poop came out of his darn butt. Right? And when that happened, he was like, that's nasty. He got his butt out. He was like, I'm going to go ahead and lock these darn doors. He got up out of there. His boy started knocking at the door. He's like, oh, master ain't even answering. They start smelling that thing. That's how I like to imagine it. They start smelling that thing. Just, you know, it kind of seep up. They ain't had an insulation like we had now. So, you know, you just smell right through the door. Oh, no, he up in there pooping. You know what I'm saying? He up in there. Cause they, you know, they euphemize, he covering his feet. You know what I'm saying? You imagine it. You know what I'm saying? You just drop, you know what I'm saying? He, the, the man was covering his feet. You know what I'm saying? You know what we had? We ain't like we were wearing jeans. You know what I'm saying? What were we wearing? Like robes. You know what I'm saying? It'd be like a robe. And you a man, you know what I'm saying? Man of war. Let's say at best you a man of war. You going to girdle your stuff up. So like you got like this robe. And then you going to take like this belt. Almost like a, almost like a pull up. You know what I'm saying? But it's like a leather, you know what I'm saying, pull up most of the time. 
And you're going to put it around here. So you got this robe that's kind of split right here. So your robe will kind of come in half here, half here, and it's being pulled up by like this pull-up type thing. You know what I'm saying? That way you got, you agile, you can move. So at best, that's what he got. And you got to, you know what I'm saying? You got to do your business at that point. You know what I'm saying? Pull-up got to come down. You know what I'm saying? He's going to drop that thing and what? guess what's going to happen to your feet? That thing got to be covered. That's why the book, book going to call it. Oh, yeah, he's just covering his feet. We all know what that means. He is taking a dump. You know what I'm saying? That boy is taking a dump. But in this case, that thing went inside his belly, the dirt came out. You know what I'm saying? That's all it is. You know, I imagine at least they're smelling that thing. Like, no, no, he's been there covering his feet. Let's check back on him. What happened next? And they tarried until they were ashamed, and behold, he opened not the doors of the parlor. Therefore, they took a key and opened them, and behold, their Lord was fallen down, dead on the earth. Mm -hmm. And Ehud escaped while they tarried and passed beyond the quarries and, and escaped unto Syria. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass when he was come that he blew a trumpet in the mountain of Ephraim, and the children of Israel went down with him from the mount, and he before them. And he said unto them, Follow after me, for the Lord has delivered your enemies, the Moabites, into your hand. Mm -hmm. And they went down after him and took the fords of Jordan toward Moab and suffered not a man to pass, mm -hmm. pass over. And they slew of Moab at that time about 10,000 men, all lusty and all men of valor, and there escaped not a man. So Moab was subdued that day under the hand of Israel, and the land had rest fourscore years, six, 80 years. And after him was Shamgar, the son of Anath, which slew of the Philistines 600 okay. men with an ox gold. He slew. So it's a different one, all right? That was the end of Ehud, right? Ehud, he had the thing rocking for 80 years. You know what I'm saying? But then after that, Shamgar came along. And what'd he do? He slew of the Philistines 600 men with an ox gold. And he also delivered Israel. He took an ox gold. So an ox gold, you know what I'm saying? You have an ox. You know what I'm saying? Why you hurting your ox? You want all your ox to kind of go in one direction. You have like a goal, which is like a, like a little pointy thing. You know what I'm saying? You kind of poke him with it. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like if he start getting out of line, you kind of poke him. And that's going to make the ox go like this. So you can make him go, okay, I want you to go to the right. I'm going to poke you on the left. You know what I'm saying? So the ox going to try to get away from being poked and start going left. So that's how they used to come. The man took that goal, started whipping that thing. I like to think of, you know, a blade. You know what I'm saying? I had that thing. He look at that thing just start. No, he said 600 of them things just start getting them. These were the people that the Most High God would have risen up when we fell into disobedience and we start crying out to him. He said, okay, I got to avenge us. These are not necessarily men of God. These are not necessarily like people who obey the word and all that. These just anybody. You know what I'm saying? The Most High God just be like, okay, get up. I want you. You get up and go ahead and uh, go handle the business. Right? So that's what we're dealing with. That's what we're going to deal with all through the book of Judges. Think of the book of Judges as a time where everything is in disarray. We came in the land with order and structure, and we left it. And there was no man of God to stand up and teach it to the people. So everybody start just doing stuff. And that's what you kind of going to see. You're going to see these judges are not straightening people out like, hey, follow the most high God. This is how you do it. They just say, hey, turn back to God. Figure it out. Right? Because they themselves, they, they had to figure it out. I'm going to get these people off your back, but in the meantime, turn back and For them, it's all, they just Avengers. Think of them just like the, the cartoons, right? The comic book. They are Avengers. You know what I'm saying? They come in, I get the job done. Avengers not all the way right. You know what I'm saying? You look at the Avengers, you know what I'm saying? Some of them got some, you know what I mean? They're a little weird too. You know what I'm saying? They be doing some, some messed up stuff they sell, right? Choosing sides while the Avengers have to go against each other in the movie. In the same way, these Avengers not all the way right either. All right, so we're going to keep on. I think next uh, next is Deborah, you know what I'm saying? We're going to learn about Deborah, you know what I'm saying, who was also a judge at the times and everything. We're going to have to deal with her and uh, probably end up, you know, whenever you talk about Deborah, you got you to break out the women, you know what I'm saying? And probably touch on women preaching a little bit, you know, you know what I'm saying? Kind of touch on that. But it's an even bigger message than all that in there, you know what I'm saying? So we're going we gonna to tackle that next week. But any questions? All right, well, let's pray out. Like women that do cracking stuff in the book. Well, you know what I'm saying? Deborah was cracking, you know what I'm saying? It was a prophet just that was calling that Paul and Peter and them that was cracking, you know.